G'day guys, and today I showed an eye going to review the game, which is between Brisbane and Geelong at the Gabba. Uh, there was the Cats getting home by 10 goals in the end, mates, and it was a relatively comprehensive performance from the Cats. It wasn't perfect, but I thought it was uh, pretty good football throughout most part of the day. And uh, you were listening in on at work. Uh, how did you size it up uh, listening in on the radio? pretty happy for the most part of the day and I was most impressed by the uh the really good start and just our sense of urgency early especially was uh, really promising to see uh, it's like the Geelong of old as we sometimes allude to uh just getting into that big start and then sort of setting up and building your game around from there but yeah look our, our run and our ball movement was really good and from the back line it looked as though we had a fair bit of run um flash dare whatever you want to call it um, yeah. I guess, yeah, that, that all uh, comes down to the confidence of the players on the day and also the defensive mechanisms from the opposition. So, yeah, Brisbane, yeah, we're good at times defensively, but by and large, we were, yeah, pretty comprehensive throughout the day. There was, uh, I think it was the left forward pocket uh, down at the uh, right, right-hand right side of the screen. It was just amazing. I think we kicked, like, three goals from snaps in that same pocket. Yeah. Not in the same spot yeah. as you may have heard about it. It was like um, Stevie J was there or something, just telling them what to do, and you know, it was just funny. I, I love watching on, just sort of seeing that, and that, that was quite uh, quite a pleasant uh, sight to see. So, yeah, uh, well, a bit disappointed with the second quarter, but um, the Bris allowing Brisbane to kick six goals. But yeah, look, I don't think we were there to win by 150 points. I think we were just there to sort of do what we had to do, and we went never truly challenged as you as we. Yeah, as you sort of alluded to there, mate. So uh, we, we controlled the game for the most part. Uh, still a bit shaky on that last kick inside 50. Early on, it was a lot easier, but uh, I did feel, yeah, that there were times where I was like, wow, <laughs> why'd you pass it to him? Or, wow, there's the one on three there, and where are, where are guys here kind of thing. But, couldn't, yeah, couldn't have been much happier, really. Hawkins was good. Contested marking was good for the guys today, and... Um, yeah, won the contested possessions nicely by plus 23, 21 more inside 50. So it, the ability to generate the opportunity is more so more important than perhaps converting it on any given day, as uh, we probably alluded to last week and in previous weeks. Uh, you'd have to agree there, mate. Yeah, absolutely. And it's good to generate the scoring opportunities rather than not be getting enough and making the most of them. I think... Uh, that's one thing, while it is frustrating to maybe not convert 
you know, at, at the very peak, even though it was a bit better, um, the fact that we are generating those sort of scores and inside 50 gives us the opportunity. So that's something to hang the hat on and uh, you just never know. <laughs> and so, man, got to be able to got to be able to get in there first, and then um, it's not totally difficult to uh, amend uh, any sort of changes there. So, yeah, look, pr- pretty impressed. Well, yeah, impressed with uh, the win, and uh, just happy to play relatively good footy towards the end of the year. Big game coming up next week, which we'll delve into a bit later. But uh, no, I thought as a team we played pretty well. Defense held up nicely. Uh, Brisbane did a lot of, well, they did exactly what we didn't want to do, uh, want them to do when kicking into our back line, though. They they uh, moved the ball pretty well. They sort of ran and carried with it, and uh, they did get a few long goals and whatnot, or at least long shots. And uh, yeah, Leper was pretty pretty switched on there. He actually didn't kick in long and high, often like most or some teams can do. So they are pretty smart about that, uh, negating knowing that Geelong loved that long, high ball because Taylor Lonigan. Mackie, Henderson, and those guys just eat those up for breakfast. So it's quite smart by Leopard there, and they had a good little patch. But overall, yeah, never truly challenged and answered when we needed to. And I was, yeah, relatively pleased with how we played. It was a nice performance. Yeah, no, very good, mate. We'll move into the votes, and uh, your old man chucked them through to you through uh, the old text. Uh, what did you come up with? Yeah, absolutely. You gave Mott Lots the three votes. Obviously, hit the scoreboard very hard, and sounds like he had quite an impact. Two votes to Menengola, who I think is probably the best thing to come out of that game. The commentators were raving about him and knowing where to run to the right spots, and they often comment on his running ability as well, not just the right spots, but just endurance, and we know that he's the second best runner at the club. And he gave one vote to Dangerfield, so I think he died early, and Missed a few late, but uh, it was one of those days of games where he just had back to the pill and, um, you know, hit the scoreboard as he does. So he gave him the one vote there, mate. So that was the old man's vote coming through the text for yourself. Yeah, good stuff, mate. Uh, I went with Menegola for the three votes. He got the uh, 33 disposals, six grabs, and also the four tackles. He started on a, like a house on fire. I think he had 16 or 17 in the opening term. Maybe thereabouts. Wow. Yeah, no, he, he was dominating. Really, mate. He, he was loving life. So, yeah, he got his hands on the footy. Absolute brute around the contest. He uses the ball really well and effectively. And uh, that's what I love about him. He was a contested beast. Um, yeah, he used the ball really well. Love the way he went about it. Uh, the two votes to Paddy Dangerfield. Yeah, the 28 disposals, four marks and five tackles and kicked two goals for if he uh, straightened up a little bit more, he probably would have had the three sewn up and the umpires still could give him three. You never quite know. So, uh, look, yeah, he was... The amount of meters he gains is incredible for the club. How strong he is and how quick he is to get to to and from a contest and break away from a contest and hit the scoreboard, I thought was uh, really awesome today. And I'll give the one vote to Stevie Motlop, who we've been calling to be dropped. <laughs> <laughs> He's got, got the uh, 23 touches next to his name, six marks, three tackles, and five lucky goals next to his name. And uh, career high for him, so he'll be wrapped with that. Uh, yeah, generally used the ball pretty well, had a bit of run and dash, and yeah, disciplined for most of the day. Gave away a silly 50, but <laughs> you got to take the good with the bad with Stevie, unfortunately. But no, he, yeah. he performed his role pretty well today, and he should be happy with that coming into finals. And yeah. Uh, few little shout outs uh i was nearly going to give it to Corey enright he was really good selwood uh was pretty good today nine tackles next to his name scott selwood's yeah. getting a nice uh resume under the belt before finals he's doing quite nicely henderson kicked a couple up forward with a bit of a swip sw- swap up there and uh that was a good yeah. performance from the boys yeah no good good We'll move into the chopping block, mate. Uh, your segment. How do you see it this week, or how do you hear it this week? Yeah, and I guess two guys, um, Mott Lop and Blitz, that we've talked about in the past. With, you know, Mott Lop showed what he can do, and that's why he's in the side, isn't it? And that's why we get frustrated when he's not playing to that level, because we know it's there, and he's a, he's a gun when he's playing like that. And I'm not sure how Blitzar's game was. His stats didn't seem to line on fire, but. Um, 
Yeah, just sort of reading a couple of articles during the week and, you know, he is an integral part to our pressure make-up and uh, you know, raise those tackles and uh, is extremely influential in the competition for pressure acts, apparently. So it's probably something that the coaching staff really get around him for so, and something that the naked eye doesn't pick up. But is this um, good as far as dropping well, um, I think Darcy Lang and Shane Kirsten will be there at best. I know Dad wasn't too happy, and I think you agree that um, they're sort of always on that fringe, those sort of guys. And I think the best part at the moment is that we're hitting some reasonable form, but even better is I reckon once upon a time, maybe earlier in the year, we probably said we really need our best 22 to be playing to win. I reckon we've got a real solid 26, 27 players that can probably fill the starting 22, and we can be pretty confident there. Starting to build some reasonable depth with, of course, Caddy coming back and Scott Selwood, as you said, I was going to mention him, he's starting to look good, um, plays a nice sort of different, more defensive role in the midfield. Men and goal has just been a revelation, you know. Um, yeah, we're we're not going to expect that every week, but if he can produce that every now and then and just has the capability to produce a game like that, well, that's a huge thing to add into your midfield, so... I think the best part about it at the moment is sort of that depth that we have. Um, of course, Menzel didn't play, Cockatoo didn't play, neither did Bartel, and of course, Caddy there. So, look, mate, I think it's looking all right. I mean, I wasn't surprised I left Menzel out because they're going up to Brisbane and, you know, they wrap him up in cotton wool. So, <laughs> he'll come do. back this week, you would say. And I think Cockatoo will be in the frame as well. Those two guys probably the most obvious ones come into Kirsten Lang that we mentioned. Yeah, you'd have to... Then, yep. Yeah, yeah, you know, you've got a couple of other guys that will need to come back in and the guys who go out aren't obvious. Uh, Men and Goal would have been one who got the opportunity through injury slash resting and you're not going to drop him now. So, yeah. um, you know, someone like Collar Jasney for, um, for Jimmy could be um, potential, but you know, he's shown that He's got plenty of ability and stopping ability, that is. Yeah, he was um, really good today. So far. So, yeah, to be honest, mate, it, it's a tough one because it was, was mid-season. You'd say, you know, we'd probably manage so-and-so or do this or do that. But, you know, next week will be a bit of a finals-like rehearsal. Mm. Playing our best 22, you'd imagine. Yep. Um, and, yeah, it's going to be really interesting to see how they go because... You guys who have come into the lineup in the likes of Scott Selwood and Menangola look to be playing good footy and really pleased with them. So you couldn't see them parting way for the more experienced guys. Yeah. yeah it's, uh, did you have anything to add to that, mate? I mean, also good news that the VSL side knocked off the top team. So, you know, it's good timing at this stage of year, I think. Things are looking up, aren't they? Uh, where was Caddy today? Um, it's a good question. They, they just managed him, didn't they? Yeah. I know Jimmy was laid out. I think they just managed him, yeah? Okay, yeah, because I, I, I've never saw the team sheet, so I've sort of only heard that uh, Mackie was coming back in and that was about it. I sort of never really saw the team sheet, so never quite yeah. got to see why he wasn't playing, but um, you would imagine he would... Oh, they must be managing him. I mean, he played a ripper against the Tigers, or so played pretty well. I mean, you wouldn't have dropped yeah. him from a game like that, so... Um, no, and he's, he's crucial to our mid-forward setup. so I think he, he probably had some sort of niggle and... Yeah, um, selected to not go with him. Yeah, he'll, he'll be back soon enough. Yeah, I think... I'm looking at the list right now, mate. I think maybe, because you've said Cockatoo and uh, Menzel for Lang and Kirsten... I'd probably say Cowan... Oh, then there's Bartel as well. Yeah, you'd probably say a Cowan and a Collar Jasney or a Ruggles, pending form, would uh, part way for Bartel and also Caddy, I believe, because you, yeah. you, you couldn't possibly kick Menengola out. No, no, it's a good point. Um, yeah, certainly Cowan and I think Ruggles has just been tracked along okay, but I've... I quite liked Cowan's footy over the last two to three weeks. I'm not sure how he was today, but yeah. no, you're right. I think um, he would certainly be a guy that would possibly
probably be in the, the way to sort of part ways with the side, but uh, a good fella to have you know, yeah. on the brink of it. Yeah, no, he played at okay, Chaos, yeah. I mean, if you're looking at Bartel versus Cowan in a final, you probably lean towards Bartel or a caddy or a yeah. type like that. So, yeah, well, it'll be interesting. It's good to have a bit of depth, mate. Yeah, absolutely. And I'll sort of touch on next week, mate, but um, take it forward. It's a game that could have been a real blockbuster, but um, won't be now. Never quite know. Uh, it's the Cats and the Demons at Simmons Stadium uh, next week on the Saturday Arvo. Do you have work off? Nah, I'm working. Oh, no dramas. Um, <laughs> <laughs> cool, cool. Uh, the live chat. Um, yeah, so we've got the Demons at Simmons Stadium. Uh, it would have been really, uh, yeah, very intri- intriguing contest if uh, Melbourne got the job done today. We got the chocolates against the Blues, but uh, it was the Blues getting the job done. So uh, that makes it mathematically impossible. I don't think it'll change Melbourne's attitude with it too much. I think they'll still want to send Ruzi out on a high, and they've improved dramatically, and they have troubled us at times. They defeated us at Simmons last year relatively comfortably in uh, what was the season-defining game and a game that we lost, which uh, Corian writes 300th game. and. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, good times. Yeah, no, no, not so fond times you, mate. Um, yeah, so, look, we'll be looking to uh, hopefully win this game. If we lose it, we're... I'll have to have a look at the ladder here, mate. We're potentially to drop out the four if we lose it. Is that correct? I think so, yeah. Yep. Yeah, uh, I'll just have a look at the ladder right this second. So, um, yep, so if we lose and those teams win... We at least dropped a fourth. The Giants' percentage is above us, so yeah, we could finish as probably as badly as fifth. So yeah, that's uh, yeah, which begs the question: It's like, is that a huge disadvantage to get a home final but one crack at it because everyone gets the, that week off anyway? So uh, yeah, look, need to win it. We'd rather be third or second or somewhere in the top four than fifth and get two cracks at it. So. Uh, yeah, look, in terms of this game, I, I, I expect us to win, uh, but I'm also expecting a really big uh, effort from Melbourne, and they've, they've got some weapons that can concern us. Gorn, Viney, Nathan Jones, and a few brutes in the middle. Jesse Hogan didn't play last time against us, and they got the job done. Uh, yeah, they're, they're pretty solid when they're on, and they bring that pressure game, which can uh, exploit us. What do you reckon, mate? Yeah, no, it's, it's true. It certainly won't have the build-up that it would have if it was sort of a live game for finals. And, but, um, yeah, it doesn't mean as much to Melbourne, but it certainly still has plenty for us to stake, as you alluded to. So, um, you know, you, you just never know with modern-day footy. Sides have something to play for. They crumble under pressure. Sides don't have something to play for. They play with freedom and get a win. You, you just don't know <laughs> the fact that... You know, Melbourne don't have anything to play for in, you know, talking marks. So, um, you just never know. Um, but, yeah, we've got, we've got it all to play for, mate. We'll get yeah, one of the best line-up and you know, forward set-ups and whatnot and uh, medical combinations. So, yeah, no, looking forward to it. And I think uh, it's crucial that we get the victory. Uh, I'll, I'll be relatively confident because, you know, I always do a kid in your park. Um, I know they beat us there last time, but I think, uh, you know, we're playing some reasonable footy as we've touched on, and, uh, yeah, it'd be great if we could, you know, get the win, and, um, yeah, probably the most likely outcome is that we travel week one of finals, but I think you you always rather have that potential to just get straight into a prelim. I think it's always, you know, history shows, eh, that, uh, you know, so often the top four, ends up being the final four, even if, yep. you know, others. Uh, so you never know, mate. We'll just have to say in goal one is getting a win over Melbourne. Yeah, correct. Um, in terms of other results to possibly go our way, uh, if Sydney lose, then we can finish second. Yeah, I think we can... M- m- uh, well, so look, we can finish first if Sydney and Adelaide yeah. both lose, but that's yeah. the most unlikely. The most likely, I think, is third. So that's assuming Adelaide win, Sydney win, and we win. 
Uh, yeah, whether or not Hawthorne win, doesn't matter if we win. So yeah. most likely third. We play Adelaide in Adelaide. I'll head into that game somewhat. Yeah, like we beat them there comfortably earlier in the year and kicked so badly and played badly but won. Uh, we comfortably beat them at home as well. So, yeah, look, out of the four, or out of the three sides we could play Adelaide, I, I wouldn't be, <laughs> I'd nearly be my first pick to play, no matter where it is. Yeah, yeah, no. It's Always different in the final, though, I do. Who does Sydney have this week? Sydney, let's have a look see at the fixture. I don't, I don't think it's, I don't think it's difficult. They got the Tigers at the SCG, so. <laughs> Adelaide at West Coast, so. And Adelaide Oval, yeah. that'll be an exciting game to watch Friday night, mate. We'll hope the Eagles get up, I think. Yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah which, you know, they're in decent form, but it take a big effort for them to get up there, you never know. But, yeah, no, wouldn't that be an intriguing first final? Travel to Adelaide, and, you know, Sydney probably playing, hosting Hawthorne. Oh, you know. How exciting is that? <laughs> It's got a recipe of a great final series already, just with the nature of how even it is, so, yeah, good stuff. Absolutely. All right, we'll leave it there, mate, and uh, nicely reviewed. Good work from you today. Thanks, mate. Nicely done. So, all right, thanks for listening in, guys. Uh, that's the review from Shorty and myself on the Cats and the Lions game with the Cats getting home by 10 goals. Heading into round 23, playing the D, so hopefully we can get a win on the board there. We need it desperately. So thanks for listening in today, guys. Uh, don't forget to give the video a like and subscribe as well. It'll be fantastic. And uh, thanks once again for hanging around. We'll catch us on the next video.